Oh, man, What's, what time is it? He looked around wildly. Annie! She was gone again. Annie! Jack grabbed the leather bag. Then, the clutching, uh, clutching the book, she, he tore out of the squirrel room. Annie! He cried. What? And he appeared at the door to the dining room. Volcano! Started Jack. What? Said Annie. It, it's coming up, volcano, at noon. Said Jack. Annie gasped. What time is it? Cried Jack. So that's the so that's what the soothsayer meant. Annie said. The end is near. What time is it? Jack asked again. He looked around the garden. He saw something near the merman found it. A sundial, he said. That's how the merman's told time. Jack and Annie raced to the sundial. What time does it say, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. His hands look, shook as he turned the pages of the book. He stopped on a picture of a sundial. sundial. It showed examples of different times. Jack looked back and forth from the page to the real sundial in the garden. Here, he said. He, he had found the one that matched. Jack, Jack read the writing under the picture. The shadow on the sundial can hard, hardly be seen at noon. Oh, man, he whispered. He looked at Annie. The end isn't near. The end is here. Just then. He heard a terrible blast. It was the loudest sound he, ha he had ever heard. Chapter 7. The Sky's Falling The next thing Jack, he, Jack knew, he was laying on the stone patio. The patio stones were trembling. A rumbling sound came from the ground. Jack raised his head. Annie was on the ground too. Are you, you okay? said Annie. Jack nodded. Everything was shaking and crashing down around them. Pots, plants, the mer mermaid fountain, water from the goldfish pond sloshed onto the patio and Jack and Annie. They both jumped up as roof tiles began falling into the garden. We'd better get inside, said Jack. He grabbed the, his ladder bag, and he and Annie stumbled into the squirrel library. Giant cracks split the stone floor as Jack and Annie ran to a window and looked out. Glowing rocks were bursting through the sky above Mount, Mount Vizius. The whole top of the mountain had blown off. What's happening? said Annie. I'll check, said Jack. He pulled out a Roman book. He read aloud, he read aloud from the section about a volcano. When a volcano erupts, hot mountain rock from cold magma is pushed to the surface of the earth. Once it gets outside the volcano, it's called larva. Larva? That sounds, that's like burning mud burning mud, said Jack. It covers everything, said Jack. Jack kept reading. reading. There was no re running lava from Mount Vesius. The magma from the volcano cooled so fast that it froze into small grayish white rocks called pumice. pumice. A pumice rock is very light and has holes like a sponge. That doesn't sound too bad, said Annie. Wait, there's no, there's more, said Jack. He read on. A great cloud of, cloud of pumice, ash, and burning rock shot miles into the air. When it rained down to Pompeii, it completely buried the town. Oh, man, said Jack. This is a... This is a major disaster. It's getting dark, said Annie. Jack looked out again. A thick black cloud was spearing over the earth like an umbrella. The sun vanished as the sky turned smoky gray. That just be the cloud of pumice and ash, said Jack. Just then the crowd tumbled again. Chunks of plaster from the ceiling fell on the scrolls. We have to get out of here, said Annie. They ran... 
From the squirrel library into the garden, ash and pumice began to fall. We have to cover our heads, said Jack. They hurried from the garden into the dining room. Look, pillows, said Jack, said Annie. Let's put them in on our heads. They hurried to couches beside the table and and Earth grabbed a pillow. Tie it around your head with their belt, said Jack. They both put pulled off the belts around the tunics. Then they tied on the pillows like giant hats. A chunk of ceiling crashed down near them. Let's get out of here, said Jack. They stepped over piles of fallen roof tiles and ran into the main hall. They pushed open the front door. A blast of heat and dust nearly knocked them, o- knocked them over. And when they stopped outside, pumice rained, rained down onto their pillow hats. Run, cried Addy. They ran from they ran from the vacation villa into the dark, burning streets. Chapter 8. Nightmare at Noon In the distance, fire bur- burst up Mount Vizors. Burning rocks and fiery ash fell from the sky. The hot, dusty air sm- smelled like rotten eggs. As Jack and Annie rushed down the street, in the forum, everyone, shoppers, soldiers, gladiators, fruit sellers, was running in every direction. Stalls had collapsed. The carts were sliding. Jack froze. He didn't know where to go. That way, shouted Annie. Jack followed her as they ran past the Temple of Jupiter. It's mighty. Calmus had fallen, and its walls were crumbling. They ran past the public bath just as its roof came in, caved in. Which way now? shouted Annie. The tree is in the olive grove, Jack. Jack said as they keep running. The olive grove and the red are not the street, although those open shops, said Annie. Remember the bridge? Jack looked up at the erupting mountain. A red hot cloud boiled over it. Fires burned on its shaped slops. Head on the direction of Mount Viserys, she said. It was behind us as we came into Pompeii. Right, cried Annie. So while others ran away from Mount, Mount Vizis, Jack and Annie ran toward it. On the street with the open shops, basket, had, basket and bo- broken jars rolled over the cracked stones. Jack and Annie ran past the bakery and the shoe shops. They ran past the butcher, butcher shop and the bath. Barber shop. All the shops were empty. The owners has fled. The clo- the closer, the closer they got to the volcano, the more ground trembled. The darker and dustier it got. This is this is just like my nightmare," she cried. Annie. Jack shocked. Jack shot. Jack shocked onto the rotten fumes. His eyes watered. Look. The olive grove, shouted Annie. The house is just over there. Come on, Jack Jack could hardly see, but he followed Annie. They left the street and ran to the dried up stream near the olive grove. Where's the bridge? said Annie. They looked around wildly. The bridge had vanished. Chapter 9 See us! The bridge was the bridge has must cave in, cried Annie. They started at the dried up stream. Pumice had peeled up in huge drifts like snow. We'll have to get to get through that stuff to get across, said Jack. He and Annie slid down the bank onto the piles of pumice. 
as they started to move across it, and more and more fell. Jack tried to move through the through the billions of warm, grayish white white pebbles, but he was trapped. I'm stuck! cried Annie. Me too! said Jack. Remember, remember what Morgan said, said Annie. At the moment, Jack couldn't remember anything. He was too tired and dazed. In your darkest hour, only the ancient story can save you," cried Annie. "Where's your bag?" Jack lifted his bag into the air above the sea of pumice. Annie grabbed it and pulled out the ancient scroll. He held it up to the dark sky. "See the story!" she shouted. Jack felt himself sink deeper and deeper into the pumice. Suddenly, he heard a deep, a deep voice say. say Rise, son. The su- then someone lift Jack up into the air. A great flash of fire lit the dusty darkness in the red light. Jack saw the biggest, strongest man he'd ever seen in his life. The man looked like a gladiator, but even bigger than the ones had th- they had seen earlier. They held Jack with one hand and Annie with the other. He placed them both on the other bank of the stream. Run, the glad, the run, the glad, giant glad, gladiator boom! Before it's too late. Jack and Annie didn't stop to ask any questions. Together they chased through the olive grove. They jumped over falling branches. They leaped over green cracks in the earth. Finally, they came to the tree with a magic, with a magic tree house. They grabbed the rope ladder and scrambled up in, to the tree house. Where's the Pennsylvania book? Jack shouted. He was too blinded by the ash and dust. Find the book that always took them home. I've got it! Cried Annie. I wish we could go there. Jack felt the tree house start to spin. It spun faster and faster and faster. Then everyone. And everything was still absolutely, absolutely wonderfully peacefully still. Chapter ten, ten. A simple explanation. Jack did a move. He had never been so tired in all his life. Life. Breathe, said Annie. Jack gulped in in cool, clean air. He opened his eyes. He couldn't see a thing. Take off your glasses, said Annie. They're filthy. Jack took. Jack took off his glasses. The first thing he saw was a ba- was his backpack. The white two tons two seats and lace of sandals were gone. So were their pillow hats and the leather bag. Jack let out a long deep breath as he cleaned his glasses on his shirt. A voice came from behind. Him. I'm very glad to see you safe and sound. Morgan Le Fay stood in the cl- corner of the treehouse. She looked as lovely and mysterious as ever. Happy to be at home, she asked. Jack nodded. The sound of the erupting volcano still echoed in his ears. It was pretty scary, said he said in a house hoarse voice. I know, but you truly, you were truly brave, said Morgan. You was. You witnessed a a famous event in history. Nowadays, scientists study the remains of Pompeii to find out more about Roman times. I feel bad for all these people," said Annie. "Yes," said Morgan. "But most of Pompeii people of Pompeii did escape. The city wasn't completely burned by." Ash, until the next day, completely buried by ash. Until the next day, we were almost trapped," said Annie. "But we asked the ancient story to save us. Then a huge gladiator helped us." Jack reached into his pack. He breathed a sigh of relief. The scroll was still there. He took it out. It was covered with dust and ashes. Here's the story," said Jack. He handed it to Morgan. "You risk everything to bring this to me. I can never thank you enough." 
Don't worry about it, Jack said, Jack said Jack. He didn't want Morgan to know how scared he had been. No, yeah, no problem, said Daddy. Morgan smiled. You were amazing master librarians, she said. Do you think your map to rescue another ancient story? Yes, said Annie. Now, said Jack, actually, he was a little tired now. Morgan laughed. No, take a nice vacation. Come back two weeks from today. Then you take a trip to ancient China, she said. Ancient China? Wow, said Annie. Oh, man, said Jack. Go home and rest, said Morgan. He handed Jack his pack. Thanks, he said. Bye. Bye, said Annie. Morgan gave them a little wave. Then Annie and Jack left the trios and head, headed down the rope ladder. When they reached the ground, Jack looked up. Morgan, he called. What's that story about one we just rescued? It's called the strongest man in the world, said Morgan. It's a lost tale about Hercules. Hercules, said Jack. Yes. He was the one of the, he was the one of the heroes of the Greeks and the Romans," said Morgan. "He was a son of Jupiter." "Oh wow! Now I get it," said Annie. "I am take, I am taking it by now to Camelot's library," said Morgan. "Everyone will be so excited to read it, thanks to you." She waved to them. "Goodbye for now." As she waved, the began, the wind began to blow, whirl. The trios began to spin in a blur of shadow and light. Morgan and the tree and the magic trios were gone. Jack and Annie started walking through the woods. Get it, get it, said Annie. Get what? We're saved by Hercules, said Annie. We we asked the story to save us, and Hercules appeared. That's not impo. Then that not in. That's not in. That's not possible," said Jack. "It was just some gladiator guy. The story of Hercules is a myth. The, that means he never really lived." They left the woods and started up their street. "I know it's a myth," said Annie, "but I have a simple explanation." "What?" said Jack. "Hercules is a myth to people in this time." Said Annie, but in the Roman times, lots of people believed he was real. So since we're in Roman times, he was real to us. I don't know," said Jack. "Did you ever hear the saying?" said Jack. Said Annie. "When in Rome, do as the Romans do." Jack laughed. Yeah, he looked up at the sky. Thanks, Hercules," he said softly. "Wherever you are." Whatever you are, Jack, Annie, the dad called from their por front porch. Time to go. Oh, brother, I forgot," said Jack. "Yeah, I hope nothing exciting happens on our vacation," said Annie. "Yeah," said Jack. "I hope, I hope it's really, really boring." Hurry," said their dad. "Said their dad. Their said their dad said coming," he called. Then they took off running for home and a restful vacation.